Hello, I'm Art Eggers, and welcome to Business Telecommunications ET410. Let's take a look at uh, some of the information we're going to be covering and uh, that you're going to see in the first chapter of the book. Um, I chose this book because uh, I felt like it was a uh, quite an entertaining read uh, as compared to a lot of other textbooks. Um, the author, Stephen Shepard, did a good job um, of talking about issues in current day uh, technology. Um, it's a few years old, but it's still uh, still very uh, valid um, with the way the IT world is is growing. And uh, I think you'll find it uh, fun and entertaining to read, as well as some of his videos that I've included um, in the modules. So, what we're going to look at uh, the first section here: the changing. Technoscape. Um, we're really going to look at the uh, three areas that uh, that uh, the author identifies. The first being the telecom sector. Later, he um, abbreviates these to TMT when we talk about all three of them. So, the telecom sector um, is really uh, that area that really hasn't changed much since it was created in 1876. Uh, it began with Alexander. Graham Bell when he first uttered the words, come here Watson, I need you. And it was really shaped on the role of the telecom industry uh, supporting access and transport. Access then is the ability of the customer, the user, to gain access to the network and the connected resources that make it possible for them to make a call, a landline, check now to check email, download a favorite song or a movie, set up a video conference call, and view a digital x-ray. On the transport end, though, it refers to the responsibility um, that of the network, that the network has to connect a user to whatever far-flung resource they may wish to access. Um, in your and again, the textbook talks about some interesting applications. This is the telepart of telecommunications uh, coming from the Greek word over distance. The technology sector then, sometimes called the IT or information technology area, um, are these things uh, that we look at every day and think of in terms of what's going on on the internet, what's going on on our computer, what's going on in terms of application and software. Uh, we look at uh, how the manufactured portion is defined in terms of getting down to the nuts and bolts like the semiconductors um, to each of the pieces and applications and parts of your computer and its subcomponents. Defining the development, of course, we're looking at the areas of the operating system, be it Linux, be it Windows, uh, uh, OSA, uh, the, the uh, uh, Microsoft uh, environment, the uh, Apple environment, uh, any application software management, uh, network management software, and those applications that are built for specialized industries. Of course, beyond your uh, immediate system, then you've got your cloud services, which does everything from data center, content housing, warehousing, uh, billing, storage, um, you name it, uh, it falls into the technology sector. The M of TMT, then the media sector, covers everything that really uh, has grown into uh, what we think of in terms of the telecom area. This is really those areas that are almost uh, identified and were identified early on with, uh, with uh, entertainment and now with the uh, prevalence of social media. So we know that there are interdependencies between the three of them. Each of the three sectors and fundamentally important in its own right. It employs lots of people, lots of talented people, lots of people that want to go to work for these industries. It drives the technology uh, with a vengeance and changes every industry on earth. As soon as we think we've seen everything in terms of what goes on on the internet and social media, somebody comes up with a new way of doing it. So if we look at, as a Venn diagram, each of the three areas, telecom, media, and technology, we see that the real power of these three industries lies in the places where they overlap. So it's really in the sharing portion that the most power is derived from these three areas, which once upon a time, you know, it was all Ma Bell. Now, you know, it's Ma Bell and everybody else in between and, and uh, outside of the, the orbit. 
So of these um, logos, you know, you, you get an idea immediately what's going on in those three areas, just in the terms of delivery, entertainment, entertainment and content. Uh, the changing competitive di uh, paradigm then, that these forces are shaped, causing areas of concern and some areas consternation. There's always a battle for, you know, who's going to be the best. You know, Netflix uh, is out there trying to outdo everybody in the content delivery of movies and programming. Executive leadership uh, and abdication, the need for balance between control and influence. Um, and so as far as the customer base is concerned, we need to look at the quality of service versus the uh, the quality of the experience, and we'll talk about that um, later. The market's growing power base then. There's a shift of power between the provider of technology services to the customer of technology services. So we're always looking at the customers looking to pit one provider against the other in terms of what's the best product, what's the best experience, and am I getting it all at a good price. Markets then are becoming increasingly uh, demanding. They demand uh, mobile. Um, we're looking at then the, um, employees being happy, kept happy in their workplace, employers benefits then. Um, we looked at we look at reduced real estate, reduced utilities, reduced carbon footprint. You know, in 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 an age of the uh, global pandemic, you can see where this becomes uh, even more uh, important for doing business and not having people on a campus or a site somewhere. So the competitive paradigm then um, looks at the leadership, the executive leadership, and its abdication. CIOs then. Um, are unwittingly becoming demoted. In many cases, uh, CIOs are not leaders, they are managers. And so as such, they are really just another layer of workers. Uh, very few of them are leaders. CIOs unwittingly then become demoted, they become too comfortable with the technology and therefore become complacent. You know, basically they feel like they can phone it in. They forget that they're management and no longer workers. They lose their vision and abdicate then the strategic thinking. Technology then has become nothing more than a support function. The need for balance between control and influence then, the new rule engagement then is a power shift from the provider to the customer. The customer then wields all the power. Based more on influence than control. Companies are looking for long-term relevance in the TMT sector. They must understand that if they want to gain influence in the market, they must give up control of that market. Apple and Android then has given have given up um, apps. They let it become third-party um, uh, development. The platforms then uh, just play the applications. Most other apps then are developed outside. Now in this case, everybody wins. If you give up the control, then you gain the influence. The developers get a highly visible platform from which to display and sell their wares, and the Apple and Apple makes a little jingle or a lot uh, in exchange for its hosting service. So there's a need for balance between the control and the influence. The problem being too many companies today aren't comfortable with that model. You know, control is deeply seated in our DNA. Uh, they have no choice now but to transition. Business will follow the better customer experience. In looking at quality of service versus quality of experience, uh, we've got a fundamental change uh, that has occurred. Uh, in the past, quality of service or QoS was a measure of goodness, effectiveness, and customer centricity, the old model of having five nines. How well um, were you able to provide and was the customer getting an experience of five nines? QoS measures then look at the technical areas of mean time between failures, MTBF, the percentage of packets lost during a transmission, average uptime, something called churn, an important factor for any business with a subscriber-based service model, including mobile telephones, networks, and pay TV operators. Delay, the amount of time it takes for a block of information called a packet to travel across a network. Sometimes you can think of that in terms of what's going on as buffering. 
Jitter, sometimes referred to as packet delay variation or PDB. The controlling jitter is, a crit is critical to offering a good online experience. You know how frustrating it can be when you're streaming something or watching something that's streamed and it's all over the place in terms of the quality. All inward looking measures, they focus on the network or the data center and not the customer. So all these things are going to affect the customer's quality experience or happiness, but these are all things that look at and occur at the uh, data center level. Quality of experience then is a fairly new measure that's needed to bring the customer into the equation. Was it good for you? While interacting with my network on my data services, did you have a good experience? This is a far more difficult uh, measure uh, to, uh, to ascertain. Companies conduct quality service surveys Better measure is the likelihood to recommend. You know, how many times have you have you filled out a survey and they want to know um, one to ten, how would you rate us and would you recommend it to your friends or family? After engaging with us and our delivered services, would you be willing to recommend us to a friend, a family member, or a colleague? Um, on the area of willingness to take a risk, uh, we're too the companies are too focused on buying out. Uh, a resembling company, sometimes in billions. So you know, some you'll you'll see all the time where one company is trying to take over another, and they're looking at spending billions of dollars. Uh, the thing about it is, though, is they won't spend a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars on entrepreneurial opportunity to try something new and different, but they're willing to buy somebody else's else's business out to try to capture that market. They also have poor decision making processes. Senior management is blind, and lower level management have little management experience. The result then becomes a lost opportunity or an opportunity cost. The benefits you could have received by taking an alternative action. That opportunity then is the cost of going to college is, it, is the money you would have earned if you worked instead. On the other hand, you lose four years of salary while getting your degree on the other, and then on the other hand, you hope to earn uh, more money during your career thanks to your education. So you have to look at, you know, there's an there's an opportunity there, but is it a loss or is it a cost? Other areas of taking on risk uh, and looking at how old rules no longer apply um, in the back in the 50s and 60s, the old Japanese model Kiretsu. Um, was the whole protected the individual companies that comprised it through mutual support and recognized interdependency. The new model then interdependencies between the three TMT sectors. So we, we, what we're looking at is an ecosystem uh, of companies that are shared and work toward a common competitive goal so that everybody wins, everybody puts money in their pocket. The competition is not between individual companies, but between the ecosystems themselves. Google acquiring Motorola, Microsoft purchasing Nokia, Apple uh, absent at CES in Las Vegas, but support vendors present to make a showing for Apple. And you see this for a lot of uh, different uh, vendors and manufacturers. Some of the money, uh, another outcome of the changing business model, a shift on how revenue is acquired and distributed. The days of doing it all, being so large and multifunctional is over. Today, revenue accrues within the ecosystem. Companies can have the same money or none of the money. So they can have some of it or none of it. Today, the dominance and control becomes a recipe for failure. Uh, it's very easy to be ignored and uh, not necessarily bought out, but pushed out. You must be willing to give up control in exchange for a degree of organizational influence. You must recognize that every out front maneuver you make is going to be lonely and a little bit frightening. If you feel entirely comfortable, then you're not far enough ahead of yourself to do any good. So you have to get outside of that comfort zone sometimes. Uh, take a little risk uh, to do anything good. That warm sense of everything going well is usually 
the body temperature at the center of the herd. So without the TMT sectors, there would be no entertainment, no electronic communication, no knowledge sharing, no drive to create new applications. So what has to be done is you have to break the old mold of the infrastructure. It must be ready to shake things up, take on the risk, and think about things that are younger and wiser. So in going on through this course, uh, which, what I want you to look at is what will the competitive landscape look like five years from now? Think about the last five years, 10 years, 20 years. Think about the last six months. You know, things have really changed uh, in the world uh, when you have things happening um, like crises and pandemics and people have to start thinking about other ways of doing things so that we can continue to exist. So chapter one, uh, hopefully uh, as you go through the book, uh, you'll understand some of what Stephen is presenting and enjoyed his uh, applications and his presentations.